Estamos de repente para fazer um outro. Só uns dois throws and I'll use. He just wanted us to stare at him the whole time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is Chuck Roberts, man of action and ring announcer for IWC, and you are listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Wrestling Mayhem Show. Dot com. It's the best day of the week. Today is the day that you have chosen to listen to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. This is DJ Lunchbox, putting it the fuck down. Monday night, you know it must be raw Leaders being a whore and not wearing bra Seen his damn self still spinning around his waist I can ship at a rhyme so what comes out of his face Tuesday night and it's EC Dub Michael Q. Knoxville joined the club If you think of the shit, scream out Boo boo, the same EC Dub And we can tell that too Wednesday night, ROH on TV The best wrestling on the planet to the end degree Joe Dane was delirious, Daniel Sin and Kim Mikadi Homicide the Rob Wilder and Kansas Kobashi Thursday night, TNA on Spike Bruce is broken so that means I'm vegan blood tonight Shut up and show me the damn next division and get so cow battling with my line and vision. Fighting at SmackDown, this is all I kicking back, watching wrestling every night. Kenny, Boogie Man, Helps Hardy, Guerrero, London and Kendrick, and Zeal and Show. RWF Sion and the Weekly Features. You're a student, we are the teachers. Shout out to Joe's crew and to the D's. Putting it down for a bill with the grace of bees. Wrestling Mayhem Show. Like a blast to your chest. You can't fuck with us. Cause we roll with the best. Enjoy yourself. This is Chuck Roberts, man of action. It's not supposed to be going at all. We're here, Wrestling Mayhem Show, 198. DJ Lunchbox is on the other line. Yes, sir. There he is. Motherfucker, uh, yes. <laughs> and in the studio, once again we have... The delicious one, Jimmy DeMarco. Two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row. This is some sort of record. Fantastic. And he is the new... He's got the belt there. He's got the belt. This is the second belt we've had in the studio. First of the first heavyweight championship belt we have ever had in the Mayhem Studios. Right there. On the video feed, if you can see that if you're watching live, the IWC championship belt is in my hands. That's right. And, uh, And, of course... It's first time in the studio, second time in the show. Correct. Chuck yeah. Roberts, man of action, and the owner of IWC. Mm-hmm. We'll be talking to these guys a little bit about all the crazy stuff that's going on and what's coming up in the future with the uh, International Wrestling Cartel. It's a brave new world. Well, Lunchbox, are you low-key tonight? You feel, you feel a little like you're, you're toned down. No, 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 no. It's, a, it's a long day. Yeah, 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 I hear you, I hear you. Pretty tired. I can uh, I can amp it up if you like. Yeah, I get a little bit of amped up. Uh, I'm really considering cracking cracking open this giant ass uh, uh, monster drink I got right here. I'm actually trying to avoid taking energy. Yeah, yeah, same here. I'm really rough with that. So I, I was a little worried bringing you down here after after you know t- uh, Jimmy with the D batteries last week. Oh, there goes my water. Oh, oh no. Now you got to drink There goes my water. I was uh, thankfully away from the electronics. <laughs> Whoops. Tires electronics. Hey, dog poop. We got it all. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get right into the fan mail. Hey, that's a great idea. You want this one? Uh, yeah. Go for it. I'll take care of that. Yeah, I'm going to figure out what all I uh, ruined over here. Let's get right into the fan mail. My fan mail, you know, fan mail. One, you have one fucking fan mail. Yeah, what is that? We did, no, we did get questions for our steam guests this week. Uh, okay, so we got, all right, so technically, we got two. It's but the holiday season, and they're all gearing up for the Christmas special next week. Right. That's why I keep telling myself when I go to bed. Fucking better be, otherwise they're not going to get their special surprise. You know, a special surprise. Yeah, the special surprise, sure. That's exactly right. All right, let's get right into this one singular fan mail. Well, let's, let's send out a personal thank you to Sean. Sean Soundoff, the award special. <clears throat> Evening Mayhem Peep. This week is the 2009 Shawnee Awards. 
And the winners are Best Male Wrestler of 2009, Chris Jericho. The female, <laughs> the female Wrestler of 2009, Gail Kim. The Best Tag Team of 2009, Fear Money. Most Underused Tag Team, Motor City Machine Guns. Most Underused Wrestler, Evan Brown. I completely would have found some uh, award music for this uh, if I had some time. Uh, that's a thought. Yeah. yeah, you know. Just imagine um, it in your head. <laughs> Just like some Chris Masters music or something. <laughs> I could play the uh, the Chris Masters kid uh, in the background. <laughs> um, match of the year, CM Punk versus Jeff Hardy from SummerSlam 2009. Best Wrestling Podcast, Wrestling Mayhem School. Hmm? Wait, do we? That's not us. Is there a sword? Is it? Is there another podcast Googling. called Wrestling Mayhem School? I'm Googling. I'm, I'm not aware of this. It no. sounds like someone took our podcast and adapted it into a Japanese anime. That could be. Wrestling Mayhem School! There's a bunch of kids trying to be us uh, that are like 15. Did mm. wrestling fans start a podcast? Is that what happened? Oh, uh, no. It was. Best musical, per uh, best musical performance, Miss Ashley. Best DJ of a wrestling podcast, DJ Lunchbox. There you go. Best, best fan of a wrestling podcast show, Mad Mike. Best guest host of the Wrestling Mayhem show, Wrestling Fan. I think I'm supposed it's to be the Wrestle Fan or the Wrestle Fan. Yeah. Until next year, this Sean and I am out. Well, um, I guess. That's no, no, all right. Thank you for letting me best DJ of. I'm eligible for that one because you're just Sorgatron. You're not DJ Sorgatron. It's in the name. That's true. Well, uh, Although um, I would have voted you for the most underused wrestler instead of Evan Brown. Thank you, I think. Um, <laughs> Well, while we don't have fan now, I, I do want to go ahead and get into an announcement, and I believe we've worked out all the details with this, if you want to get into that. For the most part, yeah. This one's, this one's pretty big, folks. This is something that's been in the works for a few months now, and we finally have advanced enough to the point where we can announce it. Um, and we're also going to be sending that on Twitter, Facebook, you know, basically a big honking media blitz. In my hand, you can't see because the camera in my Arctic Observatory doesn't work, but in my hand... We're working uh, on that. We'll send you a new one. That's correct. Um, I hold two tickets to the Pittsburgh Penguins game 22, January 5th, 2010 against the Atlanta Thrashers. Two tickets I have in my hand in my studio right here. I'm not fucking around, not fooling, no jokes. These actually exist. And we, here at the Wrestling Mayhem Show, will be raffling off these tickets at a, uh, at a specified late date to be later specified. Once we get the technical aspect worked out, but basically, you're going to, uh, you pay a small fee, and uh, you're assigned a number or get a ticket or something like that, and uh, these will be raffled off to you. Um, and uh, all the money, all... <laughs> all the money will be donated to charity. Uh, in all likelihood, it will be the uh, Child's Play charity run through Penny Arcade. And uh, you can you can enter as many times as you want, uh, upping your chances to go and see the Penguins uh, versus the Atlanta Thrashers on January 5th. And, of course, there's some logistical problems, because we know we do have a pretty uh, widespread and sometimes international audience. Uh, yes. we, have a button for, we will have a button for people to, to raffle. Uh, to be entered in the raffle and donate for that. We'll also have a general, general donation button if you're, uh, say, somewhere like in the Bronx or Texas and would like to be in, uh, would like to uh, uh, submit if you're part of the show and ineligible or family of a show member and ineligible. Um, yes, that's good. And so you'll still be able to take part and uh, donate to the cause. Uh, all that stuff will be set up and open in the next few days on WrestlingMayhemShow.com, so stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. so. um, that's good. So, well, since we had such a light load on the fan mail this week, we'll go right ahead into our first uh, music break. Come back and uh, talk to our guests, Chuck Roberts and Jimmy DeMarco, right here in the studio. Uh, can tell me, what are we listening to first this week? Oh, man. I was hoping that you were going to wait a little bit longer. Okay. 
Uh, no, I got it. Um, I ran out of material, sir. Uh, actually, of the three, this is probably my favorite song off of uh, Quantum Project or Quantum Project's records from the album Good City for Dreamers. The name of the song is Raid the Eddie, Raid the Radio by General Electrics. Uh, enjoy. Wrestling Mayhem Show one and uh. Don, you've got to stop. You've got to stop putting listen, cocaine in your homemade salsa. Stop. Stop watching Lifetime. This is delicious Jimmy DeMarco, and you're listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You are watching the Wrestling Mayhem Show. This is awesome. Online at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We are back. There's music playing. I don't. Something is happening with this player tonight. I don't know what is up with it. But it's out of my control right now. Uh, we are back. Uh, it is the Indie Minute and a very special one since we do have our guests in the studio, uh, Mr. Chuck Roberts and Mr. Jimmy DeMarco. Hi. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm great. 
fantastic. I mean, now that my feet, my looks like my shoes are now clean. Yeah, uh, so uh, yeah, Chuck kind of met me the hard way. Um, no, not that hard, but. <laughs> so, uh, well, of course, uh, uh, just coming off the big show uh, called Arms this past weekend, two nights. Uh, crazy, crazy weekend for everybody involved. party on Friday. Yeah. Purely speculation and no D matters were involved. Well if anybody saw Tony on Friday night you would not uh, say that that couldn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I heard Tony was pretty lit up at the He was so yeah, funny. Yeah he had fun. He had fun. So uh uh well well uh, uh first uh, Jimmy you, you got you got your shiny new belt there. I know I told you. I promised you last show didn't I sword? That's right. A week ago. You ripped your shirt off and broke my headphones and everything over. I fixed them though. I you did fix them. You did fix them. Chuck's got them on. I got to see. Oh, I got the broken ones. I got to see that. I, I didn't get. I didn't. I get a chance to see it. We'll work. We'll work on turning that video down, but something's not working with that. So, um, but uh, and then and then the big surprise. Chuck Roberts, the new owner. <laughs> yes. Of <laughs> course, we have a recap. I Can you, can you tell uh, involving you too? Uh, for those that haven't heard yet, or uh, hop over to IWCWrestling.com. Um, I guess, well, number one, if, if, you, if you missed it, it was uh, one hell of a match. I mean, bottom line, um, it, it was, it, it, it <laughs> anyway, it was a great match nonetheless, and, you know, basic situation was, uh, I guess it was uh, Potter that uh, kind of got in the way of a super kick. Is that right? Is that exactly what it was? Yeah, he got knocked out by a super kick. Yeah, he got knocked out by a super kick. He so he, he inadvertently got knocked out of the match. And then we had um, other referees. Bryce Ramsburg came down. Um, Timmy Richards came down. And uh, well, they were trying to attend it. Uh, Jimmy, who was on the outside, and Jimmy fill in these blanks. You should be telling us actually, better probably better than I. I hit the back of my head off the guardrail. Yeah, the referees were trying to help me out. Shima Zion is an evil person. He jumped on me and all of us. There was no referee. Nicely put. Um, yeah, no, Shima, I mean, and, and honestly, Sorg, I had not, um, I, I was not planning at all. Uh, my, my plan was to make the, uh, to make this, you know, to make the announcement and everything on the 30th. Mm -hmm. um, that was going to be, you know, how I wanted to do it. But when I went down there, Shima calls me out. And telling me to go in the ring and to announce him as, as the champion, and and uh, we had no other choice, um, you know. And basically, when when Norm left, it became official for me. So I said, match isn't over, let's go. And uh, these two finished off. And as it turns out, um, you know, Jimmy got the best of Shima. And uh, the nice thing about that, obviously, is Jimmy sitting here. But had uh, had the situation been turned, had had Shima gotten the best of Jimmy, that would have been the way that it went too. This what this. Uh, you know, it was just, it was his night, and bottom line is I knew the match had to end, and we had to have a winner one way or the other, so. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Uh, now, now I, I got to I gotta call you out, Jim, because you, you made a fit to us last week, because uh, uh, I thought Vendetta was in jail. <laughs> I had, uh, you know what, I had to throw you off the track. Vendetta the was track. my insurance. Chuck Roberts was my insurance. Vendetta was. And when Vendetta failed, who would have thought Chuck Roberts? <laughs> I regret always starting all those rumors about you being gay. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And of course, uh, uh, Maverick, who we talked about last week, also made a return. Uh, now, the he is gay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, I don't know. Oh, he, he said the word and he brought up Maverick, and I didn't know if there was a correlation between them. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. Just something about a running with uh, him and uh, Super Oprah in uh, Cleveland. Oh. <laughs> I don't that know Mike about that. Uh, uh, said he was about, about to jump the guardrail, Chuck Roberts. What would you have done if you said him? Who said? Mad Mike uh, from the Bronx that uh, attended this weekend. He upset the ring, too. Mad Mike did? Yes. He so Mad Mike, I was about to jump the guardrail. I would have kicked you out then. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear me right now. Yeah, he can hear you. He can hear you. Well, Mike, uh, you were about to jump the guardrail. You mean to help out? Is, is that what you want to do? I need to take care of the <laughs> 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 sailor. He was going to take care of those uh, turnbuckles. That's, that's I got you. Well, that's why we, uh, we got uh, performance to take uh, care of them. Basically. He was definitely a little amped up at his, uh, his, uh, his, his supposed challenge with Ray Rowe, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And Aaron was going to help you too, Jimmy. Aaron was going to help you. He helped me in the Necro Butcher match. He That's right. I threw him at Necro and he ran away. Sorry, Jimmy, I was not going to help <laughs> you. Weren't getting I knew I had it all under control. I did. Let me turn you up a little bit. I did. So uh, let me get into uh, some of the questions that were submitted. Uh, actually, a lot of these by Mad Mike. Um, the the only Uh, first ones are to the new champ. Uh, he asks, how did it how did it feel to see Denny Vendetta and the Gambinos there to congratulate you on your first uh, time? Oh, it felt great because I'm friends with all those guys, especially Dennis. I have a ton, huge, huge amount of respect for him, so it was cool to see all of them out there. Now, this is your first title I've period. Never, I, yeah, I've, team, never, right? I've never had any other title in IWC. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why not, but I just never got the opportunity, so I don't know. I'm just kidding. And uh, I go straight to the top, sword. I don't screw around with Tag or Super Indy or none of that crap, okay? Well, now, wait a minute. Like, you like, you like, like the Brock Lesnar of IWC. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. You're the next big thing. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> that was taken. Um, and he also has a part from Shima, who you know, obviously probably gets a rematch. Uh, who would you grant an IWC title shot to out the gate? Oh, nobody. I don't want to defend it. I just got my ass kicked on Saturday. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, anybody. Why, why wouldn't I? I don't care. As long as they're balls and, and they're a man, because I will not wrestle females, no matter how fat they are. I will fight any man for this championship, right, so Except for you. Except for me, of course. Because you're getting changed. What? <laughs> Nothing. Um, I'm going to answer that with this next question. Who's the last person you uh, give the title shot to? Oh, that's not a nice question. Who would you say, Sean? Who's the last who, person who would I give the title shot? Well, first off, they asked you. Uh, you, you. I mean, I'm asking for your expert opinion. I don't know. So, so there's a lot of things. There's a lot of people that, uh, I mean, you got to take a look and say right now who deserves or who's, you know, fair. I mean, you want to talk about, you know, I think there's a lot of guys in the mix and then maybe a lot of guys that want to be there. You know, um, I'll tell you right now, you got a guy like Logan Shula who wants to be there now. Logan's got a long way to go. Um, obviously, it didn't help that you know, he wants to make a mark, got in Dean Radford's face, and, you know, the returning Dean Radford, who is another man that is going to want a shot. But I think some obvious contenders, as you look, you know, down the line, you know, obviously Shima, you know, he's obviously uh, going to have to take a look and eventually get in the ring with a guy like Ray Rowe if uh, Ray could, you know, decide to do it the right way, sticking, you know, out of everybody else's business. Um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that we're discussing right now and talking about, you know, obvious contenders and matches coming up and, um, you know, and uh, a guy like John Bowman wants to get in there too. But, you know, John Bowman's got his sights set on getting his hands on uh, Ray Rose. So uh, there's, I think there's a lot of possibility in contenders. And not to mention, come up here in 2010, you don't know knew who we're going to be seeing. Mm -hmm. You know, because one of the things I definitely want to uh, bring about are, are some new faces and some new people to come in and uh, maybe some new plausible challengers, you know, on bo both ends of the spectrum, you know, so. Um, <laughs> this one uh, for Jimmy again. Uh, <laughs> what was the uh, celebration like considering the court time uh, for Beijing from planning a live sex celebration? It was a good celebration. It was, it was, it was fun. <laughs> they told you no to that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm no, just no. curious, uh, who were you planning on uh, sharing that moment with if you had been allowed? Who was I going to be with Sorg last week? I said it was going to be my first international title defense because Shima had Mexico, Japan. Okay. I had Marco Rico. Five okay. challengers, two brunettes, two blondes, and a redhead if I was feeling spicy. And I was feeling spicy. I busted his mouth open. Did you see? <laughs> oh, he, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, he busted my head open the first time we wrestled, so I got his mouth. That ruined his after party. Mm. And, 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 and last he asked, or I hate to ask this, why didn't you remove your pants last time after you left Ashley was quite disappointed? And as I told you uh, uh, at a carriage, that you were now on her tasting list. <laughs> <laughs> I ripped my um, shirt off last week and I made this girl's tasty list. A and girl's tasty list? Yes, along with uh, Randy Orton, which is the desktop on my computer. Oh, okay. What's that, that question have to do with wrestling? I don't know. I got absolutely nothing. I can't drop my pants on a so I'm a champion. I have a belt to wear my pants on now. Exactly. Yeah. I just wouldn't wear any to begin with. 
you know, common sense. There you go. Um, now we do have some questions for Chuck. Uh, again, from Mad Mike. Uh, he asks if uh, if you plan on still doing the uh, uh, ring announcing, given your uh, newfound power. Um, that's still yet to be determined. We're gonna. Uh, there's some obviously announcing that I'm the owner went a little bit quicker than I had anticipated, and so I have some thoughts and ideas uh, creatively that uh, may or may not uh, have me in that capacity. We're taking a look at that. I mean, obviously, the first thing I want to do is I want to. Um, surprise our fans, you know, and you know, understand that when they come to our show, just like Norm has done uh, since the inception of IWC, uh, basically build a uh, a show around, you know, what are they going to do next? So, um, I, you know, and, and there are things I'm forthright in telling you, and then certain things that you know that I don't know just yet. And so, Mike, I, I'm not going to be evasive on all questions, but I, mm -hmm. I, I quite honestly, right now, I'm not even 100% committed either way to that. But I think even if I were, I'd wait to see, you know, on the 30th, you know, because it's important that you guys come out and uh, watch what we have to uh, start the decade with. Um, you mentioned about new faces. Is there, is there anybody, uh, you, you can't even talk about it yet, uh, anybody that you're expecting and hoping to bring in? Um, that, you, that we can't mention, of course. Yeah, r right off the bat, uh, there are. There are some names, um, especially when you're talking about Super Indy mm -hmm. in, in May 8th, um, or May 8th, rather, that we're going to, um, you know, be bringing in for... for for Super Indy. Um, I can tell you there'll be some returning faces as well. Mm -hmm. And again, keeping with the surprise of, you know, elements of, of what we do in, you know, this entertainment business that uh, um, I can promise that there are names that you haven't seen before that I think our fans are going to enjoy seeing. And certainly a couple of returning names that uh, our fans will like seeing back again with us. Um, if not full time, certainly is a, uh, is, uh, you know, to come back and uh, enjoy, you know, performing in front of the crowds again, so. Excellent. Excellent. Um, <laughs> and uh, then, like, also, asked, how do you plan on dealing with certain problem children like Ray? Well, you mentioned Ray. <laughs> I've had, uh, Jimmy has, there's, uh, how, how do I say this? I've gotten some practice for Jimmy over the years, of course, not being, you know, Jimmy's boss at that time. I've gotten some practice. You know, first thing you have to do to a guy like Ray Rose, you have to appeal to his business sense. Um, I did, uh, Ray wants a shot at Jimmy's title. And bottom line is, that's the biggest bargaining chip, I think, that, as an owner that you have. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be in that spot? Do you want to be, you know, do you want a shot at his title? Well here's what I need you to do or here's the way that you, you know you have to be in and you know keeping in mind that this isn't this is professional wrestling it's you know there's you know obviously theatrics and showmanship involved and that said that you know it's not like run to the ring in a suit and I'm not suggesting that by any stretch I mean, and I don't think any of our fans are dumb enough is that right there because I can tell you knowing a guy like Ray Rowe that's what Ray wants and not only that I think Ray Rowe, and Jimmy knows since he's wrestling him a lot, and Jimmy, Jimmy knows uh, what are the first guys, do you remember the I mean, Rowe years ago? What year was that? It was early in your... 2007. 2007. That's about when we were That was 2007. That's about when we were Yeah, I pinned him in... Uh, it was only the 5 or 6. I pinned him in February 07, and wow. I got the shirt made. I pinned Ray Rowe. Pinned I pinned him, but he didn't like the shirt. Do you still have it? I do still have it. I do still have it. Well, I'm not going to say anything else, but I'm glad you still have it. <laughs> I still have it. Um, yeah, well, yeah, we already answered this question. Yes, what did, uh, made you decide to reveal yourself as the new owner? We do have some questions coming in from the chat room here. Uh, oh, first, I guess a, a fan request: uh, uh, Will we possibly see a Chess Blackstar versus Jimmy DeMarco in the future? <laughs> you never know. You never know. Chess is going to probably have to get a couple victories here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you something about Chess Blackstar. Um, uh, truth be told. He is one hell of a worker. Um, he works hard in the, in the ring a lot. Um, there is a guy that I think you're going to see more of in 2010. Um, you know, I, I, I really do. Um, and I know Jimmy has known him a long time. And, you know, there's a guy that is one of the first guys to the show to help out and one of the last guys to leave, if not the first and if not the last. And, and that, that's, that's a total legitimate statement. And... Uh, he is a guy that has been working in wrestling, and 
I think maybe he even might have made, you know, Jimmy and, and, you know, Shima are two guys that were able to get it a lot quicker than some others. I mean, this sometimes takes a long time. I mean, Jimmy would be the first to tell you he's always learning, mm -hmm. you know. When we were at our training facility, they said, hey, do you want to help some of these guys out? And they said, I appreciate, you know, spot here and there, whatever, but I feel like I'm still learning. Because everybody does. Um, you ask a guy like Dennis, and Dennis Gregory will tell you he's still learning. So I don't think that it's come around as quickly for uh, chest flexor as it has a guy like Jimmy or Shima. But it's starting to come around now. Jimmy, do you agree with that? I mean, from a professional standpoint, from a you know, pro wrestler? Yeah, I definitely agree. Flexor's the man. He, you won't find anyone who works harder than Chess Flexor. And he, he never gave up yet. I don't think he's going to. It just seems like he just keep <clears throat> keeps getting better and better. So... Especially now he has those nice senior tights. Exactly. <laughs> I like the robe. I really like the robe. You guys are probably too. He's been on the show. He's been on the show. Yeah, yeah. So the whole chest flexor story has come out several times. You guys have actually have a. Uh, I don't think you've seen that. No, don't knock over. We have a uh, sign up over. How about the couple? We had some set problems last week. Oh, place. okay. Um, since it got a little exciting in here. This is actually the sign tech chest flex or uh, gift he gave us that remedy put on one time. Oh, that's yeah. that's There's lovely. the name, too. I see it. That's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> the fans haven't seen us in a while. And that flex and chest of his can fit in that little tiny shirt? No, no, that's what, uh, that's what uh, Doc Remedy wore. Doc Remedy wore that? Yes. This is good. There's a uh, That's true. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's a good not picture. recently. Not, not recently. Uh, like uh, like six months ago. I've seen Dave. Yeah, six months. Dave yes. is in there. Yes. Okay. Are you using any pictures? Uh, they're on the website. <laughs> you know, why don't you pull one of those up in the chat room there? Uh, yes, sir. Watch box. So. So, uh, so, uh, you know, big, big weekend of, uh, of this past weekend, big show of the past weekend. What are some, uh, uh, other than the audience, what are some, uh, some highlights for you guys? Uh, for, uh, you know, of course, Dorms Farewell and everything. Uh, a lot of people saying goodbye, actually, uh, between the Gambino brothers and the, uh, and Dennis Gregory. Uh, anything, anything, uh, from this weekend that really stuck out in your mind, uh, on this big weekend? Me? Jimmy? Both of you. Everything you mentioned, I mean, Dennis saying goodbye, Gambino's norm, it was, uh, it was sad. I mean, it sucks that they're gone, but you gotta keep going, you know, sword. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love them. You gotta, you gotta, absolutely, you gotta love them. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things that actually, you know, certainly would stand out. I mean, um, I think anybody, uh, in, if you guys are in the chat room, I'd love to know, those of you guys that are sitting there, I mean, you would have to admit, that has to be, this weekend, look, let, let's put the weekend together, has to be um, maybe one of the best shows that I have you know, collectively was influenced by the fact that it was Norm's last show. It had emotion to it in, in a lot of respects. Um, but I think one thing that stood out for me in general is the fact that Everybody in the back, all the boys and the girls, and, and uh, you know, from Vicky to, to Daisy as well, everybody knew, because they always do, but especially this weekend, that, you know, we had three goals. We were going to do it for the fans, because they're number one. We we're going to do it for Norm, number two, and then we're going to do it for ourselves. And we came through on and all these. guys came through most. The, the performances, I thought all matches had an identity. Um, I had a chance to see in the back. But Daisy Hayes and Delirious against Moxley and Callahan was a great match. Mm -hmm. From, you know, I mean, it just, there was so much action going on. They did a great job. I thought Lay Ryder and Flexer did a fabulous job opening up. Um, you know, it was fun to, to watch. Uh, you know, a guy like Johnny. I mean, there's so many good ones. You know, and and, and two, um, Dennis Gregory. You know, is is you know I like getting in the ring and I, you know and, and and the words said by Mickey and Marshall, like those moments. It, it's just hard to pick out because there were so many great moments. But I'd say another thing that was real fun. If anybody could see the look on all the performers on the face of the big six man, the BWO Shane. I mean, that was, to me, that was a lot of fun to watch. You know, and I I don't know that many of the fans there really. And this is no offense, they're two great guys, but they really don't know the history, I'm sure, with Frank Stiletto and Lou Marconi, 
you know, and they know the other guys just because of their uh, highlight on WWE and ECW, but um, that was fun to watch, too, and, you know, Lord Zoltan always puts on a great show, so um, I don't think there was one downlight, if you will, to that whole weekend, uh, or, or anything that was... Yeah. I, 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 You know, Jimmy, obviously, and it's tough for these guys because they're on the back. And, you know, Jimmy's as focused as can be. Shima's as focused. I mean, that's just an example. Everybody's focused, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was great to see a nice send-off by Norm, though. I think mm -hmm. I think it was classy and the right people were there. Yeah. There's been a lot of people in this business that have uh, wronged him, people that have said they're his friend. But those same people are the people that would have given anything to be at that show just to be in front of that crowd. And the people he had that... the people he tried, you know, that's what Norm has asked for. No matter what you think of Norm as, as a person, and mo most people don't know him as a person like uh, he and I do, but Norm just demanded that when he worked for him, he gave it 100%, and everyone on that card, at least in the past couple years, um, and people that have it, you don't see anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that you do give it 100% every time, you, you, you still do see, and you're going to continue to see. So. Excellent. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about, of course, uh, the website's been relaunched. A lot of new stuff's been announced for the next year. Uh, Cage Fury's coming back. I'm excited to see. I actually have not witnessed the Cage Fury uh, video. It just hasn't been one since I've started uh, coming to the shows uh, in 2006. Um, but uh, what, what's kind of the philosophy going forward? You talked a little bit about uh, you know, new faces and everything. Uh, you know, we can talk about a little bit what, more about uh, uh, what we're going to see. I see uh, Night of Legends is coming back, mm -hmm. and of course yep. Super Andy. Um, but, uh, Basically, I think what we're going to do is we're changing the event structure a little bit, is, is, is the best way I know how to make the words. At least these words sound right in my head. Um, basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having um, events. Uh, we're right now scheduled for 12 events in 2010. Eight of them locally to Pittsburgh. Four of them right now are going to be at the Court Time Sports Center and four of them are going to be at another venue within the next couple of days I'm going to be announcing on IWCWrestling.com so you guys can check into that. It's a huge announcement um, as far as I'm concerned. This is probably the biggest announcement in Impact that I'm going to have even going into our first show because this is really big for all of us and really big and I'm really happy about it. But um, we're going to have three events that are going to be our highlight events called our Super Cards, is mm -hmm. basically what's going to happen. So that's going to be Super Indy 9, Cage Fury, and a Call to Arms. Um, and those are going to be the Court Time Sports Center. And those are going to be like our, our, our you know, the IWC quote unquote pay per views. You know, obviously not specifically, but yeah. just in, you know, figuratively speaking. So that's why I call them our Super Cards. So those are going to be our big events because basically what we recognize with our, our fans and what's tough now, entertainment dollars are hard for people. And it's very difficult um, to, you know, you know, if you're running, you know, bi-monthly as, as some organizations do, and, you know, God bless anybody who does it, that's their business. Or, you know, once a month, it's, it, it's hard enough. So, you know, my approach to this situation is build supply and demand. You know, we want it to be solid. We want it to be good. We don't want, you know, as much, we don't want too much overexposure. We want to build demand for our product and build demand for our talent and our matches. But do it on a consistent basis. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that has hurt us with where Norm's mind and interests have waned over the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And he admits all this, that that's nothing new, and that's the reason he you know, no longer wants to do it, is because he wasn't able to focus. I mean, 2009, unfortunately, as we all know, was just marred with uh, you know, several cancellations, and, and that, that's hard for fans. You know, you, you've got to build a consistent product. You know, when you come to a show and you've got to throw up an entire 10 minute video just to say, okay, well, why are these two guys, or why are we fighting again? But that's hard, you know, you, you're the far fans lose interest. So we're going to build consistency back, uh, for sure. We're going to have um, a great, you know, we're going to have uh, great events leading into these super cards. And these super cards really were just a way to highlight our court time shows. I, I think they're all going to be super cards because you're not going to want to miss any of them. But uh, it's just going to be, it, it, so that's my philosophy, and bring back consistency. Mm -hmm. So. Excellent, excellent. Um, of course, uh, if you guys want to check this out, go to IWCWrestling.com. Um, also, if you want to see uh, Norm's side of things, he has a fantastic blog. We'll talk about uh, here on the show. 
I read it today. It's very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, I, I did too. I read the first part of it. I didn't see the second part. I, I think only the first part. Yeah. I, I was okay, just checking yeah, over here. The first yeah. part's up. Yeah. Uh, but he is uh, he is recapping kind of the weekend uh, from his point of view and everything that's going, going on there. Uh, but that's over at iwcpromoter.blogspot.com. Um, great read, and, and as we learned a couple weeks ago, or last week, uh, that uh, it's going to be a book deal. So, yeah, interested to see how what that is. ends up. Norman announced last week that he's writing a book. His life's going to turn into a book. I did not know that. February. Okay. February. Good for him. See, another good venture for him. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people out here, and, she, and uh, uh, Jimmy, you can obviously test. There's a lot of people that... You know, I, I've been getting an all is, is norm. People, I mean, anybody listening to this program, or I, I think I've, I've asked, you know, you can put this on our website, you know, clips of this on our <laughs> website. <laughs> Maybe not the dog poop parts. <laughs> uh, but um, Norm, you know, I'm, I'm happy for I, I jerk didn't tell me. <laughs> I'm going to call him after. <laughs> 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 I did not know that. I'm happy for him. He's got a lot of adventures. He's not. For those of you that would think that he's uh, behind the scenes and this is, uh, you know, wrestling as they call an angle, it, I'm, I, as true as life as I sit here, it is not. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> if it is, we don't know. No, yeah, if it is, he's, he's ripping the whole, whole, whole crew. And if it is, he's going to be pleasantly surprised when I don't show up. Actually, <laughs> there's actually, there's actually a little dude so I was like, watch at the end of the show. He'd be like, ah, I'm not leaving, man. <laughs> people may have thought, do people think that? Was that the talk? That was speculation. Yeah, that was some speculation. Yeah, yeah, actually, I thought we would see Norm uh, mm -hmm. being and Bloody showing up in the second half. What happened to Norm? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, let me ask you guys this. Was it a total a shock to you guys, the announcement that was made? I mean, did you did you guys, um, I mean, I thought, what do you I think, you guys were in the fans, what do you think the general fan... Uh, reaction was uh, about the end of the show announcement. Yeah, yeah. about that announcement. Just um, you know, me owning the company now. What, what, was that? Uh, I I thought the uh, I got the feeling that the crowd was very into it. There was a, there was a pretty big explosion. Good. I'm glad. I mean, that's. I mean, uh, uh, and of course, overshadowed and by the fact, though. But of course, of how course. about how about his? With listen, you want to talk about some excitement? But, but <laughs> I. I I gotta tell you guys, being inside that ring, e even in that, not having prepared to do that at all, I gotta tell you, that crowd though, mm -hmm. they, I mean, sort of, you know, and he's not gonna say he hates when you compliment him, believe it or not, but that crowd, and I was so happy, I mean, I was very happy for him, um, obviously just from a standpoint from, from watching him from when we started, but um, I think obviously they were way more excited, and rightfully so. Please, that, that he won the title. I, I thought. Well, I, I think Watchbox uh, is the one. He's actually in the crowd, of course. I uh, think he, he can give you more of a sense than I, I could definitely. Oh, that's right. I was a little, I was a little busy at the I time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marcus wasn't doing that. Well, 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 there wasn't random shots of wrestlers. No, no. Gotcha. So we have to scream. Oh, oh, that is that's the other thing I had to have to call you out on. First match, you just me with the microphone. Oh, we're inappropriate. Oh, I did. Yeah, well, you're, that's little stuff. <laughs> you're not supposed to tell that stuff. Hey, so it runs the uh, lawsuit for inappropriate conduct. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. As a new owner, we might, we might have to have a, have a uh, get some some new Wait, owners. Wait, still in charge at uh, that point. Oh, oh okay. We so walked out of the building. All right. I now, okay. Now okay. the professionalism sets in. Well, I, I understand exactly. that now. I, I didn't do you after after in a, or after an admission, did I? Actually, I think it was first thing. So I was like, wow, this is how the weekend's going to be. Right. Um, <laughs> oh, Friday was Friday. Yeah, I think it was Friday. But it was Lunchbox. What, what was your feeling of the, uh, of the crowd reactions like we were talking about? I thought, it, I thought it was fantastic. It definitely came out of left field. I was uh, I was not expecting Chuck Roberts, and uh, I think the people around me were not either. Um, I thought it was going to be you, Sork, actually. You, you still... <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Norm confirmed it wasn't me last week. Uh, I confirm. Liz, I confirm. Liz freaked out. I freaked. I was surprised. Aaron was surprised. Mm -hmm. I was. I was definitely surprised uh, that it was Chuck. Pleasantly surprised. I might add. Now you are truly the man of action. How about yes. that? I, yeah, I, I am. Yeah, who, yeah. who started that? Was that uh, Faith? Was it us? Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was, 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 was we had the animated gift. 
You, you know what needs to come back? I think uh, I think it's Biker's crew that did this. The, the Chuck is my homeboy t-shirt. Ah, I yeah. want to see a return of those. He's coming back. Uh, he'll be there in January. He's yeah. missed the shows. He's coming in January. Yeah, he was at uh, another face. It was good to see. He was back a lot. A lot of people that I know used to come to shows, of course, you know, with everything going on, recession and everything. I know a lot of people Stars can't make the trip out. Because a lot of people travel for this show. Right. right. You know, it, it, you, you don't see that too often, that people no. actually put that much more time in to go, go see it. Show. Philly and I had I, I don't know who they, they, they were friends of uh, McChesney and they he got them to come out from Philly so yeah got a uh, family of about four or five people to come excellent yeah excellent and of course yeah and of course here at the Mayhem show ever since we started going uh, in 2000 I think our first show uh, me and Shashi went down to Bloom Point where uh, Ricky Reyes won the uh, the tournament okay uh, right yeah. after no excuses we missed out on no excuses yeah. with the cage match but. Uh, uh, we we've been a big fan of a, of it and uh, <laughs> traditionally Boiling Point's been a hard show for us. Yes, it's a tough show. That September show, uh, September we're in Clearfield, mm -hmm. um, which is I, I, is part of the design. I thought it was a good time to get up to Clearfield. September's always hard with people going back to school. Yeah, oh yeah. And, you know, it's just it's a real hard month. That was your guys' first, that was month, our though, first right? show. Yeah. That was I actually uh, well you know my first introduction to it. I think I sounded on WBGN when you guys were on there. Yeah. Uh, ran to Jason Goya a few shows. He knew me from the Juggalo site and uh, told me I should come out. And finally I was like, let's do it. Yeah. So and we uh, you know again like like lot, I, I tell a lot of people about it you know we come to this, see see the names like Adina Loki was going to be on that show I think mm -hmm. I can't remember if there was anybody else big uh, but we saw the wrestling and we stuck with it yeah I always yeah. appreciate you guys that's that's uh, you you guys are the first I thought it'd be fun you guys have supported us and you bring us on and you've had all of our stars and I really thought it'd be fun for he and I um, you know just to come on here too and just to kind of get a chance to let loose too after the weekend and and we'll have a few beers in the studio have a couple next beers to a in the studio next to a monkey head you walk into a little bit of dog food comes out <laughs> 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 I'm not going to let the dog food ghost work up no, no, nothing to loosen it up I'm yeah. just see you all start an explosion by dumping water all over yes. your electronics all over the all over I, yeah I pulled a Stevie Richards apparently you, you ever seen his his, uh, his new stream show so <laughs> I gotta ask you what system is to the left of your Nintendo <laughs> what is that that is not the Which well, it's to the left of the regular that's Nintendo. That's a Super Nintendo. It, that's I, a Super I, I Nintendo. I got that from a friend, and it was a very smoke-filled house. Wow, I was so, going to say, because it looks like but a I got, I got it for free, yeah. so, I, you know, it plays, it plays a couple of the games I have left, so. i, I got to tell you this, um, and this is, I'm sorry, we'll get back on wrestling, but i got to tell you, <laughs> I can get... Now, a Wii. I'm not a big video game guy. Mm -hmm. In college, my buddies played video games. We had two televisions. A television to watch TV. And at that time, it was great because then you could watch Raw and you could watch uh, Nitro at the same time. But nonetheless, um, <laughs> they played video games. Uh, and I was never a video game player. But uh, my brother-in-law is able to get a Wii uh, and get it set up where you can play all the retro, like regular Nintendo games. Because mm -hmm. I was like a huge Mega Man fan. So Actually, if they yeah. wanted to know useless information about Chuck Roberts... Uh, I gotta tell you, I'm a huge Mega Man fan. We have a pretty, pretty similar setup with that, guys? that Dreamcast sitting up there on oh. the shelf. Uh -huh. I have a disc with about 300 games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was at so I, I'm getting a Wii now because of this, and I, you know, I, I you know, clicky, clicky, like I'm not gonna get it. You know, <laughs> it's so funny you said that because I got a Wii in like 2007. And it literally sat in my house because I hated all the games because it's like exercise. Right. Like, I'm not trying to jump no. in. Right. So I've been, I've been dating this girl and she came over to my house. She goes, you know, you can download like every old Nintendo game. And I'm like, well, I like that stuff. I don't have to do cartwheels around my room to beat the freaking game. <laughs> she hits three buttons and it's set up. I, I was like, I didn't know I was this like technologically unchallenged. Right? Yeah, it was sitting in my house for three years. <laughs> Damn me. In my lack of knowledge. <laughs> so that's our, so that's so really nice so video game problem. No, 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 we fit in your future. Yeah, yeah, this, you know, I, uh, speaking of wrestling I, I, and, and video games, it, and this this comes up a lot. My uh, my girlfriend's son uh, has the uh, uh, well, he wants an Xbox, but he's got the PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And he always likes to wrestle. He's a, he's a wrestling fan, which is always fun for me. It's a great, it's a great, uh, you know, connection between he and I. And and he's always asking me questions about wrestling, and I could tell they come from the video game because <laughs> <laughs> they're not in what wrestling you watch on TV. You know, yeah. he'll say he'll say, oh, do you have a setup move? 
So, do, do you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah, from the creator, sir, yeah. And, yeah, and, 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 I, and I'll say, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, like Randy Orton's setup move. And I'll go, oh, did you get... And he'll ask me all these questions, like... And, and he'll ask me about, like, you know... It's just, it's funny to watch, you know, because I don't play the games, but knowing wrestling, he'll ask me questions that I'll know. I'm like, he gets that, and he's 10. Mm -hmm. So I think he gets that from the uh, from the video games. And, and, and it's of funny, course, you know? of course, it's even worse now, because the new one can actually write the storylines. Uh, and set them up and do the camera angles and everything. See, I, I could you never... Now, would you do that? Would I do yeah, that? Yeah, would you do that? I, 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 I would. I, 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 I was actually considering, cause I, I'm thinking about getting it maybe after Christmas or something, and then we can set up some fun stuff, make, the, make everybody on the show, and then have... Uh, some uh, uploadable YouTube videos out of it. Oh, YouTube, that'd be yeah. nice. You guys can I mean, that I mean we, we, would, we would probably, I mean, we'd probably have some ridiculous stuff, like we would have a uh, uh, Doc Remedy wrestling a bus, you know, like he does in right. life and everything, but, uh, you know, you know I, we'd have some fun with that, I think. <laughs> with, with, the, with the minds that are on this show? Yeah. What about, who else is on here, what's his name? The Lunchbox or something? What's the <laughs> Lunchbox? The Lunchbox? There's a man on the other line. Yeah, the <laughs> other line. I feel bad he's on here, he's not in here, he's going to get a chance to talk. Do you play these games? I do. I do play these games. I'm sorry, my microphone is muted for a while. Oh, that's why. It's <laughs> because we're it's probably he just gets he just gets home from work right before us. He's probably in. I was. I was. Uh, I was being considered. Not I know you're in your hunger. I'm glad, Jimmy. I forget they're talking online. Jimmy's kind of remembering you guys here. I apologize. That's good. I forget about him too. So, so are you supposed to be reading else. them and then I, I I know, I'm, so 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 okay. I'm not okay. ignoring you over oh, no, here. Okay. I'm, I'm making sure everything's cool. But yeah, anyways, I, I think Lunchbox. You're saying. Yes, yeah, video games are great. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> That's all he needs to say. No, no, Chuck, you win, you win nerd points with us uh, for uh, confessing your love for Mega Man and video games. I, I, Mega Man, Castlevania, uh, um, uh, you know, best, i got to tell you something, we'll get off this, I'm sorry. Okay. What do you guys fine. think, as you probably know, I think the best... Because beyond the eight bits is where it got too many buttons for me. I, I, I just, I, I couldn't, it's like I was uninterested. But the best ending to a video game, the regular Nintendo to me, was Bionic Commando. Never I remember, but they just never played that, huh? Isn't that one of the Texas's aliases? No! That's just close! The bisexual Commando. The bi commander bi bisexual something. Commando. Yeah, he, uh. Wow. Um. <laughs> Boy, you killed that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the ending to the Bionic Commando. No, I, 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 anybody else here in line? Can anybody remember that Bionic Commando? Or? You guys are probably too young, some of you guys. I, I don't know. Was that, uh, 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 Bad Mike apparently has a suggestion for your new shirt, Jimmy. I see the C4 back. It comes hot. Oh, I did appreciate the zipper hoodie comment in the ring on Saturday night. What was, what was the zipper hoagie comment? I, I think it, it was just like, you're, are you ready for some zipper hoagie or something? No, I, I was, I was, uh, can see she was ass around the ring and someone yelled zipper hoagie, give him zipper hoagie, and I looked and I, I liked it, I liked the suggestion, and I said yes. Yeah, so you know what zipper hoagie is? Yeah, we, had, we had a conversation about this last week. Zipper, zipper hoagie, tell me what zipper hoagie is. You know, if I, start oh, off, wait a minute, is, is you, okay, if I, let me think. Hey, if you're yeah, interested, just go ahead and send me this girl. I'm going to have to put the zipper hoagie on the, the, the $5 foot long menu. But I can't. But you can't do it. I can't. That's why I'm negotiating with Quiznos and the carriage in. The problem with the carriage in is, I'm afraid a lot of the lovely wait staff will want to eat the product themselves. I mean, they're so friendly and efficient down there. Aren't they? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, on another note, uh, well, of course, we have kickoff coming up January yes. 30th. Uh, for everybody to go check out. Yes. Uh, no, see no matches announced yet? yet? Not yet. Okay. Uh, within the week. Okay. Um, to the you know we, a little bit of a plan kicking here. Okay. Um, we got a little bit of time, so I'll do it right. But because uh, we got some other announcements before that, you know what I mean. People yeah. in the holiday yeah. season, they're thinking of buying gifts right now. Of course. Um, but yes, tickets will be available too. By the way, uh, and ticket packages. We're going to have a season ticket package. We're going to have seat licenses available too, and they're going to be. Uh, once I announce this new venue, it's easy to do it all together at once. Okay. So we're going to do that. Uh, the kickoff's coming up in, uh, you know, at the end. Perfect weekend. I, I, well, I say perfect weekend. The weekend before Super Bowl. So, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pumped up looking forward to that. And uh, I can tell you uh, for certain that he will be defending the IWC title. 
Um, so that is certain. So there will be Jimmy will be making his first title defense um, at you know uh, at kickoff. So Excellent. that is for sure. Excellent. You mentioned Christmas Christmas gifts and people considering it. If uh, you have a wrestling fan in your family, you can actually get this weekend's DVDs. This, this is the first night right there of uh, Prelude uh, called Arms. Go check that out. IWCWrestling.com. Check that for all the updates, all the information, everything these guys are doing. Um, of course, we're always a big fan here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, I want to thank you, Chuck Roberts, Man in Action, new promoter for IWC, and the new IWC representative <laughs> with that belt right there, with that shiny-ass belt. It is shiny. We're going we're gonna to get shined up more. Yeah, it's going to get even shinier, like my head. My head's what? shinier than even this belt. Yeah, I get a moment. This is pretty shiny. Yeah, yeah, I bought my head with my underwear. underwear. No, I'm just kidding. You, you got you to watch some of that Mexico off of there. You know, oh, I already watched it. When I got it, it spoke to me. It said, you don't know what I've been through. You didn't win me. You saved a hostage. I said, what happened to you? And it's, it's told me such unspeakable things. We're trying to keep the interview PG-13, but let's just say, um, are you familiar with the homosexual lead singer of Queen? So much, yes. Take it from there. Okay, okay. Just let your imaginations run wild. So before you do sign off yes. on, on this, I did want to, there's a couple things I did want to say. Um, and that is with respect to this man carrying this title right here. And there's a lot of people out there that like to have comments, and a lot of people like to, and everybody, it's America, everybody's entitled to their opinion, and that's fine. Um, but you're not going to get this from a guy like him, but I think it's important to be said. One of the reasons that man right there is carrying that title is because, you know, not only has he busted his butt over the past, what year did you start, Phil? Uh, the end of, or beginning of 05. Beginning of 05. January of Not only has he busted his butt for almost the past five years, but he's been able to do something that a lot of other guys that have been wrestling longer than he has, has not been able to do, and that is really bring the fans in and entertain them from an in-ring perspective, from a persona perspective, from a camera and microphone perspective. And any of those individuals out there that you know suggest, whether it be Jimmy, whether it be Shima, whether it be Dennis Gregory, that individuals like that don't deserve to hold that title. The one thing that always has held true in the 16 years that Norm had IWC, uh, or excuse me, Norm as a promoter and certainly several of those him having IWC, is the person that carries that belt is not just any Joe Blow off the street. It's a person that certainly is, is deserves of it and has the ability to be able to do it and carry it. And uh, I just want it said that uh, I'm proud and I'm very happy because I can't think of a better person to have been fortunate enough to have won it for my year, you know, just beginning. I mean, and uh, I hope all the fans are excited because just sitting here, and I know he sits and he's got to sit all docile, and that's cool, but he's still himself <laughs> and his personality comes through as well as he should. I got to tell you guys what, I'm not putting too many reins on this guy because he's endeared the fans to him already, but if you guys enjoyed what you've seen and, and what he's been able to do for you, 2010 is definitely a year I want you guys to, you know, Come back, watch the shows, and uh, and just watch this man carry our banner because uh, he's probably right now the best person that could do it. So just want to tell you that. And that's it. No more nice stuff from me. Thanks, Chuck. Now you make me feel uncomfortable and shy. Watching. <laughs> <laughs> See, listen, that's. I, I knew he wouldn't say it, sorry, so I did. So I apologize. I knew one of that hit. No problem. No problem. Well, we're fairly loose on our time. No yeah. problem. I think last time we said about 10 minutes, we had you in for about. 40 minutes. <laughs> we, were, you know, we did because we got into politics. If yeah, you we did. I think it was right around the elections and yeah. you were asking us who we were voting for. Yeah, it was. Well, was. We got into, and Jimmy and I think you were making I'm, dinner or something. If, uh, <laughs> if you see my Facebook, you know that I'm, 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 I have, uh, I have opinions that, it, that <laughs> I sometimes have the bottle. I'm not going to tell them here now, but I do have the bottle. Maybe we'll give you another podcast. I will do that. I tell them. I'm telling you. You see, if, if wrestling ever just decides to fade from the face of the earth, get into politics. I'll, I'll, I'll thank thank you. This is going to start a second civil war. He's going to split the country in half. I've actually had an idea to start a political podcast because a friend of ours is a very army centric fellow and has yeah. very right wing ideas that I completely disagree with. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So well, it's nice to get young perspectives on exactly. it. Exactly. Well, he's 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 right? And he's an older fellow. Yeah. He's, he's, he's the hutch I'm talking about, uh, Lunchbox. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, you know. Much, much over at birdseyeview.com. So yeah, yeah, go check him out. He's already right up in Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> I think that would be fun. But uh, yeah, we'll get you in on that if we decide to do that. 
I know. Open, uh, it's just, you got my phone line, give me a call. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, well, uh, we're going to let you, uh, I don't know, you guys want to stick around for some more conversation or anything? Or I'm hungry, about? so I'm going to go eat. <laughs> I'm going to go eat with Chuck and lick the dog poop off his shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. I, it looks like we might have a special surprise guest, which, uh, which, which, let's say Jim DeMarco, I think. I don't know who it's going to be. Uh, but, uh, uh, but thank you guys very much. Uh, very, very special that you guys, you know, came on our show first and everything. Um, and, and always welcome back anytime. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you guys for supporting us and pushing our shows. And I mean, that's exactly why I wanted to come to you guys to say, you know, thank you. And you guys are, you guys are outside of, of wrestling and what you do. You're all good guys. And I appreciate that. You've always been good to me and you've been good to Jimmy. So thank you guys all very much. And those online too. We, um, I apologize if I forget faces and whatnot. I gotta get better at that, but you know, thank you guys. <laughs> I know Aaron. I, I see Aaron. I know my buddy Aaron. So, so what do we got here? All right, lunchbox. Tell us about your Hillary Clinton doll. <laughs> 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 Another show. I don't have time for that. Cut the commercial. Hillary Clinton doll. Oh man. Uh, lunchbox. Where are we taking this out with? Oh goodness gracious. Oh perfect. This is perfect to 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 come out of this. Absolutely. Continuing our holiday theme. Uh, more. Christmas music, more alternative Christmas music. I hope you guys will enjoy it. Uh, Trouble with Two Productions. Uh, this is your brain on Christmas is the name of the album. The song is Xmas in My House, featuring Motion Man, uh, one of Jimmy D's many aliases. Uh, the band is named Various, and this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Enjoy. And this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Enjoy. Good. Ho, uh -huh. ho, Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Ho, I know you kids not sleep. You ho, think you slick. Ho, I told you ho, if you get out the bed, you're going to get punishment. Ho, ho, oh, yeah, you a mess fit. And now you want to write a wish list. Think it's Santa going to get it and visit you on Christmas. That's a big dream with some distance. You fall fed you with your mischief. You can do a head fit. If you persist, you'll be gifless. Behave, no lift, get a gift. I always hang the mistletoe cause your mom's side of one of kids. After brandy, eggnog, stand under the door and lick lips. You fight all, always pet quick. Daddy always acting. But your grandma was mac and cheese and green beans, black eyed peas, ham, yam, cranberry sauce, slam. Cut the roast juice packed in. Basketball game relaxing. For Uncle Jay, kids fighting. Cause he hella generous and it gets always exciting. Christmas in my house. We sang. We cook. We bang. Christmas in my house. Exchange. We give. Open the presents that the babies will deploy. They'll spend more time with the box than a toy. How about the neighbors getting cookies they enjoy? Mom serving the hoes about the little boy. Oatmeal raisins, sugar to your bread. Watch out for shit to get the kids active. Meet and handhold everyone. Let the kid with the courage do the whole meal praising. Man, if one bowl ain't right, I'm on the top of the house to get the Christmas lights right. Night before, no one slept. Almost caught me biting off the cookie for Santa that was left. No, it wasn't Miss Ray. You did a good on what you proved, Fred. You ain't hit all what you left said. What's the fist as you open shirts and socks? Ha ha! Okay, here's your Xbox. It's Christmas in my house. We sang. We cook. We drank. Christmas in my house. Exchange. We give. What does the Chachi do in his spare time? In my spare time? Yes. Well, I have this uh, whole monkey masturbation thing 
No, 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 the other thing. Oh, my dog. It's hard to yeah. teach a monkey to suck your dick without peeling it. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this is Kevin Eastman, co-creator of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you're listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show! It's Sork of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're going speaking! At WrestlingMayhemShow.com We are back. I had to send my guests out here. Uh, Lunchbox, what are you on at that? I covered. All right, thank you. Newt, I'm on top of it. Okay. Thanks. Huge, huge thanks to Jimmy DeMarco and Chuck Roberts. Uh, we really appreciate it. I'd like to say that. But I'm looking forward to uh, to see. I think we're going to see some great things under uh, under the reign of those two in various ways. Uh, we have, let me, hold on, I, 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 I've been setting up, uh, I have a surprise for you, DJ Lunchbox, I didn't let you in on it. It's okay, uh, someone else did. Okay, I, oh, I, I guess I did kind of let a leak a little bit on Twitter earlier today, if anybody was paying attention to that. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, bear with me, I, I'm, a little, I'm a little off tonight, I, you know, I, I'm low key myself, I'm a little, I'm a little sick, I need a calzone that did not agree with me, um, so... Um, and I'm just starting to see if these guys are getting my text message. Um, maybe we should just call and see what's up. All right.